Ford Model T, the first true car of the people, Tin Lizzy Flipper, started in 1908, lasted all the way till 1927. These things were ubiquitous. We have one on a lift right now, and we're about to get nerdy with it. We have Hubert Mies here, suspension engineer extraordinaire, designer of the Tesla Model S suspension, the Ford GT suspension, the Lincoln LS suspension, and Hubert is just gonna show you how suspensions work on some of the world's classic cars. So let's get started. All right, so the Ford Model T, like David said, it ran for many, many years. They made 15 plus million of them. So it put America on wheels. The car, as revolutionary as it is, is really exceedingly basic, which you'd kind of expect from a car from the 19-teens. But the suspension is particularly interesting and unusual, very basic, but very unusual in its own way. You might have seen this video of a, of a Ford Model T going on a Jeep RTI ramp and just flexing like crazy, outdoing Jeep Wrangler Rubicons. And uh, let's see if we can understand why that happen. If we look at the suspension, really right away you see that there are there's just not very many parts to it. You basically have this beam going across the front and there aren't any other links up here that you can see as you would expect in, in, in a suspension. Sometimes you'll see a dead axle on a car though, right? Sometimes you'll see a dead axle, but then oftentimes you'll see a, a leaf spring on this side, a leaf spring on that always side. Going, almost always, always going this way. Right, but here what we see is we see a leaf spring that's going side to side. Similar to a carriage, right? Even carriages had the leaf springs going fore aft on the sides. Huh. This, is, this is really unique. It's connected to the frame here in the middle, so it's, kind of, it's rigidly attached right in the middle. So these square like U-bolts are holding the frame? These U-bolts are holding the spring inside of this C-shaped channel on the frame. Mm -hmm. yep. Then the spring goes out and it's attached to this beam with these two little shackles here. And these are very similar to the shackles you find on leaf springs today, except that there you'd have one on one end. Here you have one on both ends of the spring. The rest of the suspension are these two rods that run from the beam all the way to this point here at the bottom of the oil pan and the transmission. These are rigidly connected to this beam. So it's all one piece. You can think of this as basically one rigid triangle mm -hmm. that is connected here to the engine and the transmission. And it's connected here with a ball. It's a ball and socket. And this one spot, because it's a ball, allows the whole triangle to move up and down and twist right. with roll. Wow. And the spring attachments here with these shackles keep the whole axle from moving side to side. Mm -hmm. The fore aft motion is controlled by this ball. And then the up and down motion, of course, is controlled by the spring. And that's it. If you think about it, there are very few points where it can wear out. So the longevity of this thing is ridiculous. So you have a lot of loads going into this one ball. You right? have basically all of the suspension loads going into that ball. But these cars didn't weigh very much and they did not have any brakes in the front. All right. So the only loads going into this are impact loads, like hitting a pothole or a bump or something. Oh, okay. That's the only load this is reacting because any, any of the vertical load is being taken up by the spring. spring. Yeah. Now the rear is the exact same concept except for one basic difference, and that is that you have to have a drive shaft. And so that's this. That's this. This is the drive shaft. And if you notice, as we move the wheels, this drive shaft doesn't move. Right. Because this is just a tube. This is a rigid tube attached to the axle here. The drive shaft itself is actually inside. So this is a suspension member, essentially. This is a suspension member, yes. And we have these two rods, similar to what we had in the front, and they all come to a point here, right at the back of the transmission. And instead of having the ball in a cup, what we have instead is we have a much larger ball being held by this retainer on the back of the transmission. And inside that ball is the universal joint that connects the transmission output to the drive shaft. Which is inside of this Which tube. is inside this tube, and which allows the whole thing to pivot while still providing power to the wheels. Wow. So this thing, like the front, must really flex really well. Huh? Again, same concept with the spring. So we have this spring here that goes side to side. It's attached to the frame here at the middle, mm -hmm. and then attached to the suspension with these two shackles, just like the front. The reason why the articulation 
on the, the, the RTI ramp that you were talking about is so incredible is because the spring is just pivoted in the middle or attached to the middle so it can twist really far before you run out of travel. What limits you in a, like a Jeep or any other vehicle going up an RTI ramp is the suspension travel. Mm -hmm. yep. These things have a ridiculous amount of travel because the spring can just keep going. Right. There's, there's almost no limit to how far the spring back can move. They like to go to bend in this direction, right? They do. Of course, the downside of that is that when you're driving them, the roll stiffness of the vehicle is poor. Oh, I bet. You take this thing through a turn, it'll just it's, go like right. that. It's just going to fall over on it. But, it. but 1908 roads, I might even want that. So these are pretty decent off-road then. I mean, they got big tires. They and... are surprisingly good off-road. Huh. There's lots of movies from the time showing these things going through ridiculous ruts and poor roads and big bumps and potholes. And they just keep going. Because being so simple, it can be very rugged. There's very few things to go wrong. Well, that's the Ford Model T suspension. You can see how simple it is. And you can also see why it did so well on the Jeep RTI Ram.